How you all doing guys? Brandon here. Welcome to Retro Dodo. Now, we're halfway through 2020. A load of handhelds have hit the market over the last 6 to 12 months. And I have most of them here for you. Or these are the ones that I advise picking up or recommend through our website. Now, I want to go through with you the ones to pick up on a budget, the ones to pick up for pure emulation power, and then the overall king of the retro handheld market at the moment as of June, July 2020. Now, this will change over the next 6 to 12 months. There's going to be more handhelds coming up, and I will do a end of year retro handheld review as well. So, if you're interested in that, definitely subscribe. So before we get in to which ones I advise, we're going to go over ones individually as well. But if you are into your handhelds, we've just launched a new merch line called the Handheld Series. I'm currently repping one now. If you're interested in, you know, repping some really cool premium embroidered uh, merchandise, check out the links below. We've got, uh, you know, the classic handhelds on there as well. And we'll be coming out with a new nostalgia series as well. So the links below if you want to check out some merch. Now, here are the handhelds that I actually like using. There's a couple in here which I advise staying away from, and I will pick at that for you as of now. So, these ones, this one here is from Power Kitty. This one here is from Power Kitty. I say don't touch them. They look cool, admittedly, but you know, they're from Pow Kitty, and Pow Kitty at the moment are just chucking out a lot of poor quality products. So, I advise staying away from them. This one here obviously looks like a switch but poor emulation power and the build quality is very poor. So don't get that one. This one here is good if you're giving it to a kid, but at the moment it's priced at $50 to $60, which is very overpriced for what this can do. So I advise staying away from that one. I think this one is called the Pow Kitty Q90. Um, so if you want to read up on that, there are links below and just Google it. Uh, you should see a review from us. So we've got rid of a couple there and then you go down like the Raspberry Pi route. This is the Retro CM3. This one's okay, but very, very expensive. I think I paid $150 for this. It's got a Raspberry Pi 3 in it, only two shoulder buttons and one analog stick and the analog sticks very, very bad quality and the screen is small. So I advise getting rid of that. And these are the ones left that I, would advise picking up. The only one I'd probably get rid of at the moment is this one. You may have seen this one going around. This is called the Retroid Pocket. And overall, it looks like a great handheld. Like this thing can emulate quite high, I think up to Dreamcast. It's got the six face buttons. It's got a D-pad, which I actually really like. And the analog stick is straight out of a Nintendo Switch, but it lacks shoulder buttons. So a lot of the games that you can emulate, you can't actually play because of the lack of shoulder buttons. Like, even if it had two, I'd probably recommend it, but it doesn't even have four, one, or, you know, it's just got none. So I can't advise picking it up, but it does look great. Like, this is a great looking handheld. It's just a shame they didn't add any shoulder buttons to it. And I don't know why. Like, why would you make a games console with no shoulder buttons? And these things are quite powerful as well. So they did put a lot of research into it and a lot of work, but unfortunately, they didn't nail it on the head. Now, for the more, you know, kind of, I don't know, gifty handhelds, you've got these two here. You've got the custom Game Boy Color here, which is from a Burger King toy. A friend of mine called Liam actually makes these on Instagram. They have a little, a little RetroPie Zero inside, so you can play your Game Boy games inside of a little uh, old school Game Boy from I think the year 2000, which is really, really cool. Uh, but I think they go for over $100 as well, so that's quite expensive. And then you got this one here, the Funky S. This is absolutely tiny. It's itty, itty, bitty. Uh, it's got that clamshell design, and this is their prototype. They are releasing a new handheld very, very soon on their, I think it's Kickstarter. But this thing, you, you, you've seen it, you've seen our full review. It's absolutely stunning. It plays all your Pokemon games. It plays PlayStation as well. It's just a cute handheld and one that I advise picking up if you want it as a gift or if you're really into your Game Boy Advance SP. And their, uh, their full version will be coming out very soon with a new shell and higher end product or materials used. Now, moving on to the big boys, this is where I'm going to talk about budget. If you've got under $40 budget, there isn't really much you can pick up. You can pick up the orig original BitBoy Pocket Go, and people underrate this thing. This thing here is still a great, great little handheld that can play your Game Boy, your SNES, and even Mega Drive games, all on this thin 
cool little handheld with great build quality and it's just a great little handheld to chuck in your bag and I really do think people underestimate this. It's a great gift, it's affordable, it's cheap and it can play a lot of your Game Boy and smaller console um, ROMs on this thing. And it's, it's from a company called BitBoy, so they do have somewhat of a customer service. The problem with these Chinese handhelds is that you buy them and there's literally no customer service at all because China and it's AliExpress. And these, these handhelds, because they're emulators, they're in like this dark shadow zone within like the Nintendo lawsuits. They're not technically breaking the law, but they're kind of enticing you to download ROMs, which is illegal. So it's almost like... You can buy a gun, but you're not allowed to buy ammunition. It's kind of weird. So if you're on a budget, you could probably pick these up secondhand for like $10, $20. Um, so if you are on a budget, I recommend the original BitBoy Pocket Go. And if you want to go up, maybe towards the $30 range, then you have this. This is the RG300, a great little handheld that looks like the old school Game Boy. And it's got one of the best shoulder buttons I've seen on a retro handheld out of China. Like these things feel absolutely great they have a nice lot of feedback and it overall it, it, it performs really really well i think this does playstation one emulation as well not the best though but anything under that it can do very very well and it's got good build quality and the screen is great as well and i think this is the newer version it's got usb-c charging and a better display so if you want to go and save some more money on this you can go back to the original versions uh, which probably have a slightly uh, less better quality display but still again a great handheld now the Q4, Q400 here is one of the newer handhelds to come out. It came out about two months ago. This was so close to being perfect. The dual analog sticks, four shoulder buttons. It's got four USB ports as well, which allows you to connect this to HDMI on your TV. And then you can plug in controllers and play like, you know, Mario Kart, Game Boy Advance games, whatever. In, uh, in with two different players, etc. Now, this was meant to emulate N64, but at the moment, the firmware is really, really bad, and it just doesn't do that as of well as of yet. But I'm hoping they will update that over the next few months, and this will be a very good handheld. But this costs around about $70 to $80, and that's what you're kind of getting with the rest of these handhelds here. You could probably get the GKD350H here, which is good for $50, but it lacks four shoulder buttons. And that's where you're getting towards the, is it worth my money? If it's not got four shoulder buttons, what's the point of buying it? Because a lot of PlayStation 1 games, or a few, shall I say, needs four shoulder buttons. So they age really quickly if they don't have four shoulder buttons. Now, moving on, we're getting towards the last few here, which are probably the best. Now, in my personal opinion, if you want something for an adult uh, that's a bit pricey, but they can build it themselves, like I really do think the Clockwork Pi game shell here is again still underrated. This is probably a three, four year old handheld, but you actually build it yourself. So I don't know if you can see here, you've got these clips on the side, right? You can unclip these, and this is a DIY kit. So you build it yourself, and you can take off the shell look, and you basically build the, the screen, you put together the, the motherboard, the D-pad, the speakers, and it's basically like a Lego kit for retro gamers. And it is quite pricely. You're looking at $150 for this thing, but it makes a great, great gift. Like if I got this for Christmas or my birthday, I'd be a very, very happy man. And that can emulate up to, I think just below, I don't think it can do PlayStation 1, I might be wrong. Uh, because it does lack shoulder buttons, uh, but you can get an add-on to add on the shoulder buttons should you want in your kit as well. You just put it on the back of this like Lego uh, grid here and you, you get your shoulder buttons. But without doubt, a really, really cool handheld, but it is a wee bit pricey. But hopefully towards Christmas, you might be able to get a deal on it. Now, these are the handhelds left that I probably rank the best of 2020 so far. These are the top five without a doubt. Now, a couple of these may be new to you. Some of them you may have seen before. Now, this one here is not, it is an emulation based handheld, but it runs off cartridges. Now, this is an official Ever Evercade handheld here. Really, really cool. I think you buy the cartridges for about $15 and they basically are official ROMs from the official developers. So for example, uh, I'll be playing here Earthworm Jim directly from Interplay and they come with actual um, 
cartridges that you can buy and you can add them to your collection. So this is a multi-game cartridge here from Atari and you get, I think, 15 games on here for like $20. But this one here I'm using is the Interplay Collection 1, which comes with six games, including Earthworm Jim. And this is what you're looking at. Like this is what the handheld will look like when you load it up. You've got your menu here and then you just jump in and play your games. The build quality is really, really good. It's official, it feels great. They, it kind of, I think this was released in the UK, so you've got some support but yes again if you do want to save some money this probably isn't the one for you the handheld itself i think goes for about 50 pounds and obviously the games are around about 15 to 20 pounds as well so if you do want a lot of games you will have to to buy them but the great thing i like about the evercade is that it's bringing back cartridge based consoles so i can have this in my collection i can go out and trade this with a friend and it just looks good and it's really bringing back retro gaming into a new modern way which i really really like so if you're into that definitely check out the evercade it's not perfect without a doubt the build quality quality is a little weird like they didn't have add a glass display which is a bit unfortunate but nonetheless a really really great handheld now you're you're left with the four the four big dogs but two of them are basically identical now the latest one which literally came out probably as of this week and it's blown everyone away because it can emulate dreamcast and n64 incredibly well and it is this one here this is the rk 2020 as much as it looks a bit boring it can perform very very well now if you didn't see our previous video or a couple videos ago it performs incredibly well it plays n64 and dreamcast emulation perfectly the build quality isn't the best it's still got that plastic shell the uh the triggers move around a lot and the abxy you know buttons aren't the best but then again this is only i think 60 dollars and it can play n64 and dreamcast emulation like this is the future of handhelds here and this is what we're going to be seeing come out of china a lot more lately but the unfortunate event of this is that the rk2020 actually stole the firmware the software of this an official odroid go advance which came out i think the start of uh february maybe even march a great handheld but the build quality was very poor they couldn't keep up with the order quantity so some people wasn't getting their orders and some people uh, basically had to wait three months to get their handheld and and they even had to build it themselves like they wouldn't ship it out pre-built you had to build it install the firmware it only ca came with two shoulder buttons the d-pad was really poor and it's just a very very poor quality product or the or the the hardware of it but the software was incredible well this thing can emulate n64 and psp and playstation one very very well so what what RK2020 did is basically stole the firmware and created a whole new hardware or handheld to go with it with four shoulder buttons and better build quality and this thing is blowing up everyone is picking one up and I don't blame them but the only problem is and a lot of people don't know it is that the Odroid Go Advanced messaged them and say you've stolen our stuff we're going to take legal um, uh, process with this stop it or we'll go a step further. So the RK2020 doesn't actually ship with firmware. So when you get it, it's a dead console. You can't open it up, you can't play it, which is a very, very, very big downfall. And the reason is, that's the reason why I can't rate it number one. If it came out of the box, playable, its own firmware, this would be the best one to pick up as of 2020. So if you are looking for, you know, the, the power within the retro handheld market. It is the RK2020, but you will need to uh, uh, download your own firmware straight out of the box, which means plugging it into your PC, downloading your, uh, your firmware, and then installing it on the RK2020. You will be going through tutorials. You will be on forums asking for help. It's just a not, it's not a nice customer experience at all, which is a bit disappointing, but I can imagine in the next few months, this will come out with pre-built firmware straight out of the box that will let you play your game. So watch out for that. Head over to our Twitter and we will notify you when the RK2020 comes pre-loaded with firmware. So putting those two aside, it literally comes down to these two. And these guys are basically changing the metal retro handheld market. These guys are the most popular. This is the BitBoy Go Pocket version two. That sell tens of thousands uh, last year. Now they've came out with a metal version 
and I really, really like it. The BitBoy Pocket Go 2 isn't the most powerful handheld. It can emulate everything up to PlayStation 1, but in terms of build quality, this metal version feels incredible. If Nintendo put their logo on it, I would absolutely believe them. Like This thing looks sleek, feels sleek, it's thin. The only downfall is that it has a very, very poor quality analog stick, which is a, a bit disappointing. Um, but overall, I still highly recommend this uh, because it is a, a stunning handheld. But when you get onto the metal version, so each of these have plastic versions, which are probably $50 cheaper. You're looking at $109 for the metal BitBoy Pocket Go. But what I still think is the best handheld of 2020 so far is the RG350M. This one here, this is the king of handhelds without a doubt. It looks great, feels great, and it, it is a bit expensive. Like this thing here is coming in at, I think, about $129, maybe less. You might be able to get it for $110, uh, but it is expensive. You're looking at $129, maybe even a little more shit, but I can confirm and promise you it is without doubt the best handheld out there as of yet. What is the biggest seller po selling point for me is the build quality. The, me the metal version uh, has the D-pad and the analog switch, which is really, really nice. And if you turn it on, so apologies, I know I haven't turned on any of the handhelds as of yet, but I have done separate reviews on each of these in the past. So if you want more detailed review, feel free to go through my video library and you will see a review and more in-depth look of each handheld. But this is the RG350M here, I'll zoom in a bit, and what I'm classing as the best handheld so far to pick up. Now, this is your loading menu, like any Chinese handheld, this is what you get. You go into emulators and you can load up all of your ROMs that you add onto this. So this is your PlayStation ROMs, I've got a bunch of ROMs here that I can jump into, should I want, and you can load it up with thousands and thousands if you want. Um, so you've got Crash Bandicoot 2, Tomb Raider, you know, I've got, I've got a lot on here, I've got Crash Bash. If we load up this, we can have a little look at some of the um, emulation on this thing. The two analog sticks are great, and they're, they're straight out of the Switch as well, so they're really, really good quality. This is a sticker around here because it does have an Ambernick logo, which I didn't like, but on Etsy you can pick up stickers and new ABXY buttons should you want to change the look of your RG350M. The screen is stunning. I think that's a three inch display. Absolutely crispy, saturated. It's got four shoulder buttons. It uses USB-C and they've just come out with a new firmware update which allows you to use the HDMI cable directly to your TV. So you can use this almost like a little console. It's got rubber grips on the back. You've got your SD card slots and your speakers at the bottom. It's just an overall stunning, stunning handheld and this is what people should be looking at because if China can keep coming out with this kind of stuff, it's gonna be very, very impressive. There's just a look. If you want even more in-depth review, definitely check out our video review and our written review. But this, so far, is our favorite retro handheld of 2020, the RG350M that can play PlayStation and anything before that incredibly well. I'm hoping in the next six months in 2020, the RG350M gets a bit of an upgrade and allowing us to play N64 and Dreamcast emulation like the RK2020. So these are the two I advise to get as of yet. If you want straight out of the box playable build quality and you're willing to pay a bit of money, get the RG350M. It's absolutely stunning. It comes in silver, gray, and rose gold. If you want power and you know how to download firmware and you're into your retro emulation, go for the RK2020. There are links below on where to pick these up, but I do advise that 
If you are picking up the RK2020, just prepare yourself to sit down for an hour or two, getting used to downloading firmware, downloading your ROMs, and setting up the device while going through forums. And if you have any troubles with the RK2020, customer service is non-existent. Whereas the RG350M, it's it's still you know somewhat non-existent, but you're gonna get uh, some support eventually. That is the problem with Chinese handhelds at the moment, is that support, is just non-existent. But hundreds of thousands of people have bought the RG350M already, and I can promise you there's Reddit forums, there's blogs that will help you, and a lot of people know what they're doing with the RG350M. And plus, you can get accessories. I've seen people come out with actual grips for the RG350M. I've seen people come out with these stickers here, which go around the border, which I've picked up, and now people are coming out with new analog sticks and new ABXY buttons and D-pads for those of you that want to pimp your RG350M. So there you have it, a look at 2020's best retro handhelds, some not to buy, some to pick up on a budget, and some to pick up if you're into your metal retro handhelds. The RG350M wins for me as of now, but I can imagine by the end of the year that will change. So definitely subscribe if you want to see more retro handheld content, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Peace.